the one thing that I really want to make sure you know is that parasites will rob you of energy. That is their goal, is to take food from, from you, and this is going to lead to chronic fatigue throughout your life with no explanation. No, I don't have Epstein-Barr virus. No, I don't have cytomegalovirus. No, I don't have Lyme disease. Well, then look for this because they rob you of ATP production. So what can I do? You can stop eating sugars or refined sugars or foods that are heavily laden with uh, glucose or any form of sugar. Now, I'm not saying sugar or carbohydrates are bad in themselves, but sugars, carbs, starches that are refined or simple feed parasites. So the more you eat them, the more they are going to feed. And that's the reason you may crave them is because they live in a quorum in symbiosis with you after a while, and they will make you crave the foods. There is a book, which you may not want to read, but uh, you hear how high my voice got on that. It's called Your Brain on Parasites. And it talks about how parasites change the behavior of the host. So if you start to see your child really crave sugar, it could be yeast or candida or parasites. So parasites in, come into play. We need to knock out the refined sugars. So we're talking about sugar sources such as cow's milk, refined corn starch, corn syrup, high amounts of high fructose corn syrup. There could be any forms within candies or chocolates. High sugar fruits, high sugar vegetables, fruit juices that your child could be drinking that has more than 12 to 15 grams of sugar. Sodas or Cokes, white potato, picking up tater tots or french fries daily will give the parasites a common food source. Now, I'm not saying you live in a bubble, but you need to look at anti-inflammatory diets. Anti-inflammatory diets take into account that there are sugars out there that could feed the microbes that are imbalanced in your gut. So we want to knock out these refined sugar sources. Are complex carbs a good option? Yes. Now, if you can find good complex carbs or try to change gently the, the diet of the, of the child or even go into different types of smoothies or snacks that have lower amounts of sugar, that's the greatest first step you can use. So look at the label. If the label says three grams of sugar, you're thinking it's great, but go to the carbohydrates as well. If the carbohydrates say 12 grams of carbohydrates and three grams of sugar, you think, oh, it's only three grams of sugar. No, combine them. That's 15 grams. That's a very high amount of sugar. So you want to keep it for parasitic infections below at least six to five, five to six grams of sugar. Now, are you going to do this all in one day? No. Your child will actually get more and more agitated because the parasites are going to starve. They're going to come out to the bloodstream. They're going to look for food. So you need to do it in increments. Start this diet, even if it's they have a normal amount of their normal sugar one day, the next day you cut it in half, and then repeat the process to where you get half the amount of sugar week daily. And then go to a quarter. And then eventually train their brain to not want as much sugar and then add in some of the herbals if you deem well and ask your primary care doctor or pediatrician for them if this is the right route. Always do that. This is just education. So we start to cut those food sources out. The breads, the baked goods, the candies, those things all contain sugar. Wheat sources, flour sources, corn tortilla chips, the small snacks you get from a health food store that you think is really good for you, but they have high amounts of sugar in them. If you see the amount, they're still feeding the microbes. So cut them out. But do it gently. 